What's up, Facebook world? So thanks for joining us for our uh, TechNet tonight. You're here and you want to hear about the grand prize, right? So for those of you that have not been with us, the grand prize is not one, not two, not three, not four, but five BFG tires, KO2s or KM3s up to a 37-inch tire. So by being at this live and following the instructions that Al will flash across the screen, screen during the live stream so you have to stay for the whole thing you will be instructed to put a certain comment in the comment section that will enter you for a chance to win that set of tires at Dixie Run but you don't have to be present to win you should be at Dixie Run because it's going to be a blast but you do not have to be present to win the five BFG tires now for those of you that have been with us since the beginning, this is our 16th episode, right? So that means if you've been with us since the beginning, you have 16 times that your name is in the hat to win that set of tires. Also, there's one other way to get your name in the hat one more time. If you are not a member of Southern Four Wheel Drive Association, go to www.sfwda.org and become a member. Don't do it right now. Watch the live stream. But after the live stream, right away, go there and become a member. That enters you with another chance to win that set of tires. So if you've been with us since the beginning right now and you became a member, you could have 17 times that your name is in the hat to win that set of tires. And trust me, when it gets slippery out on the trails, you need a set of BFGs to get good traction. All right. Well, thanks, Mike. Um, we're going to go straight to our guest guest speaker. But before we do that, I have a surprise. I have a secret guest speaker. This person's going to introduce Dennis. So hold on, guys. Here we go. Driving this Jeep with Terraflex suspension on it gives me that added confidence that I need, you know? Uh-oh. Situation. What the heck? What is that? Rescue looter, get out of here. Hey there, sir. Could you use some help? Sometimes men get a little embarrassed when they're lost or stuck. So just be sensitive. There we go. See? This won't be so bad. Wait a minute. I know you. No, no, you don't know me. I know I know you. You don't. You're Burt Reynolds. No. Tom Selleck. <laughs> no. You don't know me. Uh, okay. Whatever. It'll come to me. Remember, be sensitive. The mustache is a strong indicator that this rarely happens to him. Hello, Dennis. How are you today? <laughs> All good. <laughs> Guys, go ahead. Dennis, introduce yourself first. Yeah. Dennis at Terraflex. I lost my last name somewhere along the way. I don't know. I may, I'm Dennis at Terraflex is what I go by anymore. But uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a privilege to be here. Glad to uh, talk with you guys. I'm just looking at some of these comments. It's like, oh, Dennis is famous. I saw him one time. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's Jake. Good job, buddy. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, you guys have seen us out there from the Terraflex thing doing our videos and all that and we have a good time and uh, we don't take things too serious so I hope we can have a, a good time with this tonight look forward to some questions and uh, my buddy Mike here is going to kind of direct us on this little excursion through Jeep knowledge that we're going to experience tonight. Yeah so super grateful to have you here Dennis um, and definitely for you taking the time out of your day to kind of share your knowledge because you've got quite a bit of background in the jeeping industry and kind of the aftermarket industry. So I think it's a great time for a lot of our um, viewers to kind of glean that knowledge, especially for some of these people that are in the process now of building maybe a new JK or a new JL that they're driving around. So thank so, you for being so, here. So tactfully done. Not once did you say you've had a lot of years in the off-road business. Not once did you say that. You just said that I had, you know, some experience and some background stuff. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think it's it's kind of important, you know, right off the bat, someone buys a brand new Jeep and the first thing they want to do is just 
throw some big tires on it right away, right? But there's yeah. there really is kind of a process and a, and a thought process that goes into planning out your build and and kind of what your end goals are. Yeah, there there really is, and you know, I think I think part of that I want to go big and bad is is uh, our our own faults in the in the industry. You know, where we show up to a show and we've got some bad to the bone Jeep that's all massive and built and accessorized all the heck. So everybody sees those and they're like, yeah, that's what I want right there. I want my Jeep to look like that. And, uh, and you know, that's, that's all good. If that's, uh, if that's what you really need your Jeep to look like, but, uh, uh, there's a lot of reasons that we, that we buy a Jeep, you know, you got to ask yourself, why did I buy this thing? You know, so it's easy to find in a parking lot. Great reason. It's not just another mouse car out there on the freeway. You know, you ever find yourself sitting on the freeway in a traffic jam and you look around and there's there's all these just ubiquitous cars out there. These are just cars. They're all gray and white. And they're just there. And you're thinking, man, am I glad I'm not driving one of those things? Yeah. In the Jeep that I enjoy, you know. So, so there's that. Um, how about accidents? Uh Shoot, you get in a, an accident in a Jeep, you're going to be the winner on that. I mean, how many times have you seen posts up on Facebook where some little car slammed into the back of some guy's JK and, uh, I mean, the driver of the Jeep's out there yelling at the guy to get the plastic off his bumper. Get that plastic off my bumper. I don't want that on there. And the guy's car is just caved in. You know, it's just wiped out. And, you know, they're... You're, you're like, get this fan belt off my trailer hitch, you know? I mean, it pokes it right out of the radiator, and there's this fan belt. So, yeah, Jeeps are Jeeps can take a hit, you know? They're, they're designed to take a hit. We use them pretty hard. So there's there's a there's a lot of reasons. Um, chicks dig it. I mean, let's face it. Chicks like yeah. a Jeep. No, that's, that's never good. Um, it's the number one accessorized platform in the world out there. Uh, nobody... No other vehicle has more accessories available to it than a Jeep. Uh, that's cool. You can make it your own. So there's a, there's a lot of reasons to have one. But if, to, to, but if you have a specific reason for, for a Jeep, um, you want to keep that reason in mind when you're building your Jeep. Uh, you don't want to build um, a total trailer queen if you need to drive it to work. You know, you got you got to look at the parameters of what you're what you're going to build and. Uh, what you want it to do um, before you start doing that build. And if you have a plan um, where you're going with it, God, it really helps. You can you can do the build once, and you can do it right, and, and you can be done with it. <laughs> Who am I kidding? You're never done with it. But hey, you, know, you can do it. Yeah. So, so um, ask yourself, you know, how are you going to use the Jeep, right? Would that be our, that's probably the first question you'd ask, Mike, isn't it? How would yeah. How you going to use the Jeep for? Yeah. Well, um, it kind of goes along with all that stuff we, we last listed above there, but uh, uh, people need to understand, are you are you going to commute in it? I mean, if you're if you're going to use it for your daily driver and you got a 100-mile commute, your build is going to be completely different from the guy that says, Nope, it sits in my garage, and when I want to go wheel on the weekend, I throw it on a trailer and take it out there and go work it over. So those are two different two different builds you're going to do. So I, I would say it's easy, what, 90% of us are going to be in that category of we drive it around town, we use the thing for our, our, our daily, you know, take the kids to soccer, and, and yet we still want to go out and hit a trail and go fishing or hunting, whatever, on the weekend. So most of us are in that category where it's a uh, it's kind of a uh, multi-purpose vehicle. Um, so when we get when we get past that point, we ask ourselves, "How big a tire do I want to run?" And I think that's that's the starting point, and it all goes down from there. You know, <laughs> yeah. you with that tire size, and that's gonna that's gonna dictate what that build's gonna look like. Mm -hmm. Um, Every, yeah, everybody yeah. always asks. They say, you know, how big a lift do I need for thirty-seven inch tires or that type of thing? So, you know, that's like their first question that they have before they, sometimes before they even buy the Jeep and get it off the lot. Yeah, yeah. When you when it comes to the tire thing, I ran the 
I had my own shop for like 20 years. <laughs> and then I did, uh, then I moved my shop over and joined up with Terraflex is how I got into this whole thing with Terraflex. And I ran their shop for them for, I uh, brought all my guys, they, and it's a long story, but I brought everything over to Terraflex and we started, uh, I ran their shop for about another, I don't know, eight years or something like that. I'm, I don't think I ever had anybody say to me, man, I put too big a tire on my Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's kind of funny because you would think that at some point somebody would have said, yeah, maybe I screwed up a little. And there probably is that guy who put a big old set of tires on his Grand Cherokee and thought that was a bad call. But, but uh, normally, um, for the guys that are commuting and running around town, uh, shoot, a, a 35-inch tire has been such a happy number for a, works in all cases, doesn't kill your gas mileage and all that, but it, it still works really well for, for an all-around tire. Um, shoot, uh, it, it goes, the other thing that's kind of weird is, depending on what kind of Jeep you have, if you have a TJ, you go to a 35-inch tire, and you got to have a, a pretty good bill to get 35 inches under that thing. And you go to a JK, shoot, three inches, and you can put a, a 35 inch tire under your JK. But the new the new JLs, you know, the 2018 and up, shoot, you get 35s on those things. I mean, I see guys running 35s on the stock Rubicons without doing any lift. Now, they wouldn't want to hit a bump because they're going to blow their flares off. But, you know, they can, if they're going to round town it, they can cram them on there and drive it around. So, uh, tire size kind of varies with what kind of what kind of a Jeep you have as well. But, uh, so if you're, when you're making that decision as to how much tire to put on it, um, yeah, just like, just like Mike was saying before, you got to consider the, the gas mileage, tire wear. Um, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a few things to look at. Um, what's another one? Budget? That we look at, then we we were we look at this. Even the tire size ties into the budget thing. Yeah, um, tires is a tires is a recurring expense, especially. You know, if you buy a set of thirty-seven inch tires, then you wear them out. You've got to put them on there again, right? Yeah, yeah, you really do. So I have this guy. This budget thing's important. I have this guy that came into the shop one day and. And we worked out this whole build. He's going to do this whole thing. And he was a lift, long arms. I mean, it was a, it was a nice build. I mean, he was, he was spending like 15 grand or something. So he was, you know, it was, a, it was a pretty nice build. We scheduled her all up for Monday. I'm like, sweet. All right. He calls me Monday morning. Hey, uh, I can't bring my Jeep in. I'm like, oh, all right. Is he okay? Everything wrong? wrong? And he's like, ah, you know, I was an idiot. I left. I left your quote laying on the kitchen table. My wife came in and looked at it and saw the quote. She came unglued. She just said, if, if that's what it's going to be, you're going to have that Jeep. And you're not going to have any, you know, the whole thing. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, maybe should have worked out that budget thing and maybe, maybe talk to the wife a little on that. You know? <laughs> so these Jeeps yeah. are a team effort. So it's important to, important to have all interested parties on the on the same page, I think. Uh, so I think it's it's, it's really interesting too to kind of watch the progression of, of a Jeep build with someone, right? They go and buy, you know, the Rubicon, which is a great vehicle off the showroom floor, and they go up to thirty fives, and then it, it progresses to thirty sevens, and then you know the next thing you know they're replacing axle shafts and things like that. So you know there's you, you never see a Jeep owner that that has completed their build with a plan in place. And, and I think it's really interesting how kind of in your description, you laid out laying out that plan, you choose the tire size, but it doesn't really stop there, right? You've got a ton of other yeah. aftermarket things. Yeah, the t you start the tires and then the lift, and even the lift probably isn't the most expensive part of this thing. You know, this, this wheel and tire package gets nasty in a hurry, but... Um, shoot, wheels and tires flare. So if you're if you're trying to keep it low, uh, maybe you're gonna do. Maybe you want a set of 37s on there. Really, I swear, 37s are getting to be the the 33 of the the 90s. You know, and the, <laughs> it's just 
they're just getting to be really, really common, and they, and they look good on these new ones. So, but anyway, if you, if you do want to do that, then you're going to need to look at lift height on it to make sure you're going to clear those 37s. If you're trying to keep it low, then you're probably going to have to change your fender flares to accommodate the tire and keep the Jeep low. Keeping the Jeep low, I'm all about that. That's, that's a great way to go. Keeping them low, center of gravity low. It keeps your steering geometry in line so you're not having troubles with it, uh, uh, driving it down the road and so forth. Keeping them, keeping them low is just there's a lot of good involved with it. Except for yeah. that part where your tires hit the flares and they blow off. I was, <laughs> I was, at, a, I was at a show in, uh, where were we? Houston. It was down there at, uh, Crystal Beach. It was the one and only show they ever had. What tried to have down there. But anyway, they had this big, they had this big uh, off-road course that they dug out and made. So here comes these these little gals, and they got their JK in there. They're driving this thing along, and they've got. Uh, she's got. She looks like she has at least thirty sevens on it, and uh, and and it's like the first time she's ever had it off the road because they're showing her how to put it in low range and stuff. And she's got a bunch of girls in there. And they, they blow through this thing, and she goes through this big dip, and as she hits and comes up the other end, it, it hits her flares and just blows both flares right off the Jeep. They're just held on with plastic clips, so it, it doesn't take much to, to knock them off. And, and, it, and they'll actually survive it. You can blow them off, and then you can go and clip them back on and go on with your life. That's unless the guy behind you is having just a great time as well. So as he comes through, oh, there's something in the road, whatever. And he just drove over her flares and just smashed the heck out of them. <laughs> so, so, yeah, oh, no. make make sure that you, you have the bump stops and all so forth set up right so that it doesn't blow your flares off. It's embarrassing that you have to go back and pick them up and drive home flareless. But anyway. Yeah. So, so at, at Terraflex, you guys are... are have a have a pretty big reputation in kind of the, the lift world and you offer tons of different kind of choices on lift kits and stuff yeah. from budget all the way to kind of the higher end um type thing so tell us a little bit about those that's uh that's that's always a good one because the question is which which lift should i buy well again what were you trying to do so if you're if you're that commuter guy that's uh putting it around town but still on the weekend likes to work it. And we all do. We want to get out there on the weekend and you want to, you want to be able to wheel with your buddies. that are maybe a little more purpose built toward the, uh, the off road end of it. So, um, lifts are usually available in a couple of different ways. You can do it. You can, you can do them all a la carte. You know, you can say, I want a set of three inch coils and, uh, uh, put those sway bar links with it. And, you know, I think maybe some, control arms over here be a nice touch so you can try to do all that but it takes it takes some uh well you need to know what you're doing to build it so you have all the necessary parts so one of the things that we've done is if we put lifts into packages i always relate it to me walking into a, a computer store and saying i need to i need to buy a computer and the guy's like what do you want I'm like, a computer <laughs> well what do you want the computer to do you know, I don't know, computer stuff. I need to be able to type and do word processing and definitely want to be able to surf the interweb and uh, that kind of thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm a total reader. I don't know. So the guy has to tell me. So if, if they've got a package put together that says, well, here's a great package for a guy that just needs to word process. Um, you know, he's going to he's gonna do some, some Internet stuff. And he's going to, you know, uh, just use the basic punch look, save pictures and you know that kind of stuff he's only going to need this this basic unit but the guy that's going to be a graphic artist and he's going to try to build videos and um, you know work with, with a lot of uh, graphics on he's going to need a whole different machine so anyway we did these packages so you can say the guy that's uh, just uh using around town Wants a Jeep that drives great on the highway, but he still wants to be able to take it off-road and, and, and wheel with his buddies. The ST Street and Trail, ST lifts are designed with fixed control arms so that the caster adjustment is already preset in. Caster is a, is a steering angle on the front. So so you got um, tow-in is how they, they tow, 
tires toe in like they're pigeon toed, scrubs the rubber off. Terrible weather angle. If you get toe in off, it really eats your tires. Camber is how they're straight down the line. And they can lean in or they can lean out. So that, that's your camber. Caster is a little weird because uh, you have to you have to think about your axle and where the ball joints, upper and lower ball joints, uh, and your tires pivot on those ball joints. So you're, you're steering back and forth and you're pivoting on that ball joint. So that inner C thing, how that rotates back or forward, that is what your caster is. So if you have, you ever see a road grader when you go out there and you see these tires and they're just flopped to the side and you're like, holy cow, those tires, that doesn't look right at all. Well, that's, that's a ton of caster. So it, it has no return to center on that. And you have a ton of negative caster. Um, so anyway, we, we usually throw a, a little positive caster in it. And what that does is when you turn, it actually tries to lift the vehicle a little bit because the just because of the angle of it, you know, it's I'm trying to do this with it's a little weird, but caster is an important angle. And if you can keep your caster close to what the factory specs were, it's gonna make your Jeep drive a lot better. That's the bottom line of what you need to know. And it does it because uh, it helps that return to center. Return to center is when you turn the steering wheel going down the road and you let go of it. And if you just keep going, that's you've lost. It's no return to center. And I'll tell you what, they drive terrible when you have no return to center. So um, travel, you know, if you let go of it and the steering wheel comes right back to center, that's that's good to return to center. And that's uh, that's some good uh, caster that's built into your Jeep. So anyway, that was a long time around to say these arms are made with the length preset so that your caster is dialed in. Um, so you can do that type. You can do adjustable arms, the CT lifts, and then the, the our RT lifts. It's a it's another one that has a rotational bushings in them. It's a it's a great flexing lift for the, the guys that really go off the road a lot. So bottom line, we just have these these systems put together. So that it's in a budget and it's within use. How you're going to use it? Is it long arm, short arm? And then it's also uh, so budget and use, and, uh, and and the parts are all in them. So you can say, I want a I want a three inch ST kit. Boom, order that. It's got everything you need. It's got the exhaust spacers. If you got a JK, it fixes that. It's got sway bar links. It's got the control arms that are set. So it's kind of nice to do a, a, a package package lift. You can piece them together and a lot of manufacturers um, will have the same type of system available to you out there. And there's there's some good there's some good lift companies out there. There really are. There's there's a lot of good ones. There's some that I'm not as happy with, but um, if you just do your research and look at them, you can you can see the reviews and see what's out there. And there's there's some good lifts. But uh, we try to we try to do the uh, everything you need in the kit provide you with a full warranty and, and away you go so that was a long ways around what kind of lift you want to buy but that was that <laughs> hey dennis paul we're waiting on mike to join us he, he dropped off oh, okay um, chuck has a question yeah he has a 99 tj with a 2.5 inch lift currently 31 inch tires he said what are his options Am I locked into 31 inch tires? If with a two and a half inch lift, um, you know, on TJs, a one inch body is just magical. Everybody's like, oh, body lift. Oh, no, not on a TJ. On a TJ, a one inch body just fixes so many problems. And, and it's, there's really no downside to it. They, they just really uh, give you a little more clearance. One of my favorite lifts on a TJ was always a three inch and 35 with a one inch body. You could keep your stop full stop flares and everything and they just work. So if you're at a two and a half inch, um, all manufacturers lifts are not created equal as far as, uh, as far as lift height. So how much lift you're actually getting out of that two and a half inch lift may be, may be questionable. But if you're clearing your 33s, they just, they're really 32, pretty much you said. Um, 30, 31, 31. there it is the question right there 31 now you could you could bump that up shoot put a one inch body and go to some 33s on it you could do that easily and that's uh that's a life changer that's 33s on tj is uh it's a that's pretty nice pretty nice little lift on it um 
So I don't know what uh, is a it's a four banger. You got four ten gears or uh, two TJs. They have three fifty fives in them, three seventy three four ten. So the, the gear ratio is yeah. not a matter for standard, whatever. But with thirty, even with thirty threes, you're probably going to be okay. You can stand to drive it. It's not going to be like you just threw a boat anchor out behind you. So, you, you know, because you jump a tire size like that, and it's like, oh, my gosh, this thing is slow. Um, but 33s isn't that huge of a jump. I think you'd be all right. Uh, just do the one-inch body with it. When you start thinking about after you've chosen lift tire size, you guys offer some different bump stop options as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, bumps bump stops are a big deal. A lot of a lot of manufacturers don't even put them in their kits. And I'm like, how can they do that? How can you not have a bump stop? You've got to limit the up travel. Or number one, you'll bottom out your shocks, and shocks don't like to be bottomed out. It really damages the shock. The seals, everything internally, they don't like that. So now your shock is all of a sudden your up travel limit or your bump stop. So you really need to have bump stops that are uh, dialed into your shocks. You want your bump stop to stop that up travel. You know, give yourself a quarter, half an inch or something before that shock bottoms where that bump stop is totally compressed and maxed out. We found that bump stops um, um, play a big role in ride quality. You hit that surprise washout, you know, you start hauling down the road and you're like, oh yeah, this is great, I'm loving this. Whoa, washout, you hit the brakes. There's no way you can stop. You slam that thing and it bottoms hard. That's when we came up with uh, the speed bumps. Um, there's air bumps. Air bumps are what they've always used on like trophy trucks and the off-road, uh, the desert racer guys and all that. And speed bumps or are, are, are air bumps are, are awesome. You know, they work great. There's um, nothing wrong. The only downside was with the TJ or the, or the JK guys that's when they first came out, was that uh, air bumps were noisy. When they hit, it's a real kind of a click, 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 hard hit. So depending on how they're dialed in, every time you hit a little bump, you're in this click, 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 click. And so the things are noisy. But when you do hit a big, big hit, it takes that, that hard hit out, and they work great. So we said, all right, let's do, let's see if we can figure something out that'll give us that soft compression without making all the noise. So um, we, we work with this microcellular foam. It, it's weird stuff. It's uh, it's like nitrogen impregnated bubbles in the thing. So it's not like a sponge where you squeeze it and the air goes out and comes back in. It's it's actually a uh, it's a bubble that you're just pushing the bubble together and then it springs back out. You've actually put this foam inside of a canister so that as you're as the piston, it's you think of it as a piston compressing the the gases in it. So as it comes in, it's compressing it. So it takes more and more. It takes like 150 pounds to get those things going, but 5,000 to compress them all the way. So they suck up a lot of energy. Um, and that microcellular foam is crazy stuff. We stuck it in a press and just left it there, fully compressed for like two weeks. Brought it back out, tested the pressure on it. Same. It didn't care. Stuff's crazy. Wow. So that stuff's nice and quiet, but it just sucks up a hit. Once, once somebody's run a set of those on their Jeep, they're like, I will never not have these again because it just takes that, that hard hit from a washout. Or if you're doing the boulder field, you're crawling through the boulders and you're bouncing off rocks off everyone, all of a sudden, instead of having to bam, bam, let things settle down, you're just bump, bump. Your speed through the boulder field and stuff, it just gets like so easy. And you'll, you'll turn around and you're like, what, where is everybody? What? <laughs> you, just, you just walk through that thing. Um, you know, some good Falcon shocks and those speed bumps. Holy cow, it just really makes the suspension work well. So, yeah, bump stops, speed bumps, make a huge difference. Yeah. So, once we kind of go through upgrading the suspension, maybe we change tire size and gears on there, bump stops, things like that. You know, it, it kind of doesn't stop there either. We've got to think about things like drive shafts and how they kind of work because now we're flexing these vehicles with these new suspensions crazy, especially if we're disconnecting a sway bar. What's kind of your guys' recommendation on, you know, upgrading drive shaft links and things like that? Yeah, drive shafts, um, especially starting with the JKs, uh, drive shafts got really weird. Um, 
with the they had those Rosetta joints in them, you know, at the transfer case side. Uh, and so the angle on that would get really steep, and there's a boot right there that would, would eat that boot. And we, we could still go about three inches and be fine with those. And then, shoot, when the uh, the 2012, when they came out with the uh, the AWA 5, that nag trance that they swapped out into them, well, they did some weird things. They moved a cross member toward the front of the, the Jeep a little further so that when the drive line comes down, your drive line is coming down and it's and it's and it's hitting that cross member. So as as we'd lift our jeeps, that drive line would come down and hit. So we had to put a space around to move that back out of the way and give the drive line some clearance. Um, but we found without doing anything, the most lift you could do was, was like two and a half inches. We would measure the full droop was two and a half inches, and your drive line was laying on that cross member. That's wow. that's as far as you could go. But, but then I'd see these manufacturers coming out, and they're like, here you go. There's a four-inch left. I'm like, well, how did they fix that driveline problem? Well, they, they didn't. They didn't address it. They didn't, they didn't worry about it taking that joint out. They didn't worry about it rubbing on that cross member and eating the boot alive. They just put a four-inch lift on it. I'm like, geez, don't do that to them, people. Please. So anyway, yeah. When, when we do a kit and we, we say it's a, it'll hold a three-inch lift or it'll hold a four-inch, we've actually clearanced everything. We know that all the parts are there so that it will actually work as advertised. And sometimes um, it's you need to put a drive line in it. Like in the TJs, you know, shoot, you, you start doing a, a TJ lift and getting them over, and you get over three inches, even close to three inches. And that, that rear drive line is so short and it's such a steep angle, it'll vibrate you to death. All the TGA, TGA guys out there, we've all been there. So um, short shaft kit, you know, getting a double carbon joint in there, a CD joint on it, takes care of that. So, yeah, that it makes a difference. It's, it's, it's interesting, the uh, driveline's one, but this gear thing. Like, why uh, why do you need to gear your Jeep, and when do you, and is it necessary? Well, it, it's uh, the JLs. Let's start with the JL just because of the newer ones. JLs, the transmissions in them is that new 8-speed. And that new 8-speed transmission has a 4.71 to 1 first gear in, in the automatic. Um, that is super low. By comparison, uh, the 2012 and up JK, um, that's got that nag trans in it. That's like 359, 3.59. So we went from 359 to 471. To make it worse, you look at that, uh, oh, like an earlier JK, the 08 to 11. Those things have that 545 RFE. It's a, it's an intrepid transmission. Now, I'm speaking intrepid for crying out loud. That transmission had a three to one first gear. So from the early days of the JK, we just went from a three to one first gear to a 471 first gear. So we just, we just, what that's telling you is, the engine, that crankshaft goes around 4.71 times you know, to turn the axles once. So it's, it gives you that, it's that gear ratio. And there's more to it because you've also got your rear gift, gift to figure in as well, as well. But just for simplicity, that uh, that kind of gives you that. When you get this gear ratio thing, it's how many rotations to one rotation of the tire. So... I mean, you look at that, shoot, second gear in the new JL, second gear in the new JLs is 3.13. That's second gear. Remember first gear in that early JK, 3.01? So they're almost they're almost the same. So it's like these J, the early JKLs are starting out in second gear. That's uh, what the guy in the JL would think. Like, well, you're starting out in second gear. Well, that just tells you that those guys in the, the earlier years, gears were so so uh, such a big deal. Uh, you really need to, to increase the, the gear ratio in your differentials so that you can stand to drive the thing. Shoot, some of the early ones came out with 321 gears in them in those, uh, those early JKs. It's, it was terrible, especially if you're in hill country, you know. If you guys, Tennessee running through there, out, it's, it's, we're Salt Lake, so, you know, we got mountains all over the place. Uh, it was terrible. So we'd always put, we'd always jump them all up to, 538 years, uh, your ratio, take them up. Rubicons all come with 410. I'm sitting here rattling off all these numbers. Um, 
just just like keep going back to that okay a 410 it's going to turn 4.1 times to one there a 538 whoa so if you think about your bike you're you're starting to pedal your bike if you'd like to start pedaling your bike off you're going to go up that hill and you're going to start in second gear every time you take off yeah that'd get old in a hurry well that's what your jeep's trying to do and it works the transmission um just heating up torque converter all that kind of stuff it just works and trying to trying to get things moving so gear ratios um are a big deal but bring it all back and say all right so in a jl god you can get away without gear you've got such a low first gear in that thing that uh, they come with 345s in so it's kind of an in between everybody's gears to start with so it's a pretty reasonable gear ratio in your rear end and if it's a rubicon you get 410s uh even some of the other ones are they're doing 373s but three 345s is about about as bad as it gets and uh even that with that first gear in those things shoot you can run 35s 37s it's like what you know no big deal it works but on the other side of that, let's say that you put a set of 538s in that jail. That's what I did on Slimer. So I did 538s, 39-inch tires. Oh, baby. What a rocket. So you can have a lot of fun. You know, you throw some gears in that thing. I'm sitting at lights, and I'm uh, I'm giving nods to the rice rockets next to me. You want to run it? Is that what you're thinking, buddy? Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they are quick. So yeah, I have I have very safely under controlled conditions uh, put that slimer up against a, a 62 in a in a JK with uh, he had 40s I'm running 39s we both had 60s a little guy I'm at two door he's four door I'll give him that but shoot my little two liter turbo just ate him alive it was awful you know it was awful but he was making a lot more noise but, but it beat it. Uh, supercharged uh, JK with a with a three six in it. Supercharged. That one. We were both two doors, both sixties, both thirty nines. Whoever was asleep at the wheel when the light changed in this controlled environment that we were exercising our uh, <laughs> speed, <laughs> when the light would change, whoever was asleep at the wheel would get a little jump, and then they pretty much hold. That I would win one time. He'd win one. So it was. But that little two liter turbo that thing's that's quick so uh we'll sidetrack but if you guys are looking at new jls and like all right what should i buy should i buy the two liter turbo or should i stay with the three six okay i've done them both and that little turbo is so much fun to drive on the road and it's so quick and it gets such great gas mileage and all that and it sucks so bad when you try to wheel it hard <laughs> It's terrible, uh, and and you wouldn't notice it unless you're really doing stupid things. You know, if you're doing ridiculous obstacles where it's just re- and you're trying to feather it so you don't flop it on your back and all that, and you're trying to do, if you're going to wheel it like that, maybe don't do the turbo. Otherwise, turbo is great, but you just don't have the control because you'll be crawling up that hill. All of a sudden, that turbo will hit. And you're just grabbing gears. You're like, whoa, it's coming over. You know, the thing will just walk and just hit on you and go. Uh, and then all the new safety features on the JL. You can't, uh, you can't, you know, you usually drive with the gas and the brake. You know, you hold the gas steady, let off on the brake, and just really use some good control and crawl over rock. They hate that. They, You start doing that, and all of a sudden, your throttle control just goes away. You're like, gas quit working. What the heck? Where'd my gas go? So, um, yeah, it's just the safety feature. You can, those tasers, you can plug those things in and turn off a lot of it and get get a lot of it back down to, to reasonable. But you'll be halfway up the hill, the tires start spinning, and the gas pedal just quits working. There's just nothing, and you're just like, yeehaw. <laughs> you shoot back down the hill, and I'm like, this thing is going to kill me. This, you know, it's going to kill me. And you may want to watch our next video but uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's coming out any day. But anyway, yeah. So, should you buy the turbo or not, man? If you're if you're wheeling hard, ugh, think twice. But it's sand and all that. Oh my gosh, they're a riot. They're so much fun to drive with the power and so forth. But for me, next time around, I will just stay with the three six because uh, 
Um, I just like to control a little better because I often do stupid things. We all do. That's just that's just <laughs> part of the game. <laughs> no kidding. Now, well, I don't know where we got around that one, but that little tangent. That <laughs> now, so, you know, we go through building our Jeeps. I think some of the most common overlooked stuff is the type of things we should take with us on the trail. Um, so I do a, a lot of four-wheel drive training. And, you know, we, we see people all the time. They, they come with these Jeeps, and, you know, they're amazingly built Jeeps. And, you know, 37, 40-inch tires all kinds of stuff done to them and they, they've got lockers and everything, but when they show up, they don't have any recovery gear or they don't have a winch or the fire extinguishers and stuff like that. You know, I think that's an important process when, when kind of planning out your Jeep, cause that stuff's not cheap. And it's also not one thing fits every vehicle because recovery gear for different weights and things like that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I feel inspired at right at this moment. I, I feel, I feel like I would like to donate a TerraFlex recovery kit to the to the effort here, so that you guys can uh, <laughs> to, the, to the Southern Utah Full Drive Association, so you guys can give that thing away. So yeah. I will I will we'll supply you guys with a in your giveaway coming up. Terraflex uh, recovery kit. And that's going to give you a tree saver, a tree strap, or six footer, you know, that you wrap around the tree so you're not wrapping cable around trees and hurting them. So it gives you that, and it gives you a couple of D rings, and it gives you like a 30 foot strap. Uh, gives you, um, I don't know what else, that thing. a hat. And uh, yeah, nice bag to put it all in. So yeah, it's a pretty nice recovery kit. It gives you all the stuff in there you need. So I'll throw one of those in. Um, I really ought to have a recovery kit. Every, you know, you go out and you're like, you know, we're not doing anything. Let's just go. Let's just go. Every time I do that, then I don't say, yeah, let's just, let's throw a tool bag in and let's throw in that recovery kit. It never fails. You wish you had. <laughs> so. it, it really does. You know, it, it's just like I'm going for that quick trip on the trails and don't take my tire repair kit or I don't take my recovery kit. The one thing you forget always going to be the one thing you need. Never fail. But thank you so much for that gift. That's awesome. So you guys heard it here, right? Live. The recovery <laughs> kit from Terraflex. That's, that's going to be our weekly prize. So check that out, guys, and a chance to win that. So, yeah, yeah just awesome. get the name and we'll drop ship it to them. We'll make it easy on you. So just give them yeah. the name. Wait a minute, Mike. Yeah. Tell them what they need to do. Oh. Mark, share. What's it? Oh, you guys, yeah, they got to earn it, right? You got to earn it. That is correct. So make sure, guys, you know, as with all of our live videos, right, make sure that you like this video, share it with everybody. When you share this, you're helping Southern Four Wheel Drive spread their, their name out so they can support their three major commitments, which is conservation, recreation, and education, right? That's what Southern Four Wheel Drive needs you to do. So like, share, share it with your mom, your dad, your brother, sister, your dog's hairdresser, your vet. I don't care, your dentist. Tell your dentist about this video. He, he or she needs to watch it too. And make sure that you guys go and like TerraFlex's social media, their Facebook and their Instagram. For those of you that haven't watched Dennis's videos, they are awesome. Not only are they funny, but they are informative too. So it's great information out there. Uh, no, thank you. I see on here, let's see, somebody said the uh, recovery kit, awesome. Oh, they're needing a first aid kit too. Fine. So in a first aid kit. So recovery <laughs> kit and a first aid kit. Oh, awesome. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's some really good stuff. So, okay. Well, yeah, you know what? I'll throw in a. How about our new hats? I'll throw oh, in a couple man, of hats nice. in this field too. It says Terra Flex right <laughs> on the hat right there. That way, when you're when you're wheeling with the top off, you can keep your cranium out of the sun. <laughs> it's important. It's yeah. important. Oh, let's. Well, uh, what about to our, our, our Jeep build, the purpose build? I guess we had the guy that uh, 
we just we just did one with the uh, the guy with the commuter and did all around stuff. Uh, how about the the overland guys? Do you do a lot of overland, Mike? Is that what you're into? I do a lot of my training and um, trail rides and stuff are kind of focused towards kind of the overland overland world. And when I first started training about nine years ago, it was it was all Toyotas, right? Everything was Toyota. But now we are seeing an increase. Uh, a huge increase in JKs and JLs kind of hitting the overland. Good. Scene. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an awesome platform for it. Uh, we spent uh, some time in Australia, you know, obviously those guys, they live and breathe the overlanding stuff, but the, the Toyota guys and all that, there's still this, uh, you know, there's still the Jeep Toyota thing going out there. But what happened is the Jeep guys started building their Jeeps and uh, larger tire sizes and stuff. So, they go up some of these hills and all of a sudden these little 31 inch tire ruts are now 37 inch tire ruts. <laughs> and so all these guys in their trucks are like, Oh crap, the Jeeps have ruined this hill. We can't even get up it. The Jeeps are like, yeah, buy a Jeep. Buddy. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeeps are, a, they're really a great platform. Um, the, the, the thing that they had to fight against is the stinking Toyota is just, they just work, you know, they, they last a long time. The dependability and all that was, was just really good on them. So Jeep's come a long way on that. Um, it, it's funny when that, when the JLs came out and they have that, that stop start thing of the light, you know, you pull up to the light and the engine kills every time I have to just laugh. Cause I think every time a Jeeper jumps in one of those pulls up to that first light, the engine shuts off. I just know they have a heart failure. It's like, oh crap, my Jeep just died. Because <laughs> that's what we're into, you know. We know it's just going to die on us. Because I did the same thing. I'm like, oh, it just died. You let off the gas and it starts, and you're like, oh, oh okay. I guess that's what it's supposed to be now. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, longevity on Yodas is really great. But we they've come a long way on the Jeeps. The Jeeps have, uh, have really come a long way. And then you look at how much. And which just, uh, just the, the square footage inside, the stuff you can put on them. Um, yeah. We even make suspension systems for the uh, for the Overlander. When I built uh, oh, the Harbinger, that uh, Jeep I did that was uh, just an Overland kind of a build, um, got it all done, fridge in the back, rack on the top, big uh, rack out the back on it with an air tank. And I mean, I had stuff strapped on that thing, anything I could find was just hanging on this Jeep, you know. And then you put a kayak and a bike and stuff. I'm like, I got some stuff strapped on my Jeep. That's good. <laughs> so the problem with that is now all of a sudden the Jeep is just sagging. I mean, it, it was like I had a three inch lift on it. It's like, oh my gosh, this thing's sagging hard. So all we did was take our, our regular um, SD3 springs out of it and put in our, uh, our Overland or Outback springs into it. They just have a little higher spring rate. And that, even with all that weight, and I swear I was down an inch and a half, at least in the back, it just boom, brought it right up level and just handled it. And I'm like, all right, now it's going to probably ride rough because I've got such a higher spring rate. But uh, I had the Falcon shocks on it so I could adjust my ride on it where I want it to be just by, you know, clicking the valves on them. So I adjusted my Falcons and, and it's like, this thing's awesome. Uh, go down the highway with all that weight on it. You get the crosswinds and so forth to be able to turn your shocks up to a, a firm setting. The, the Falcon adjustable three threes on it. But the, you've seen those piggybacks that we do. Amazing. You crank those things on the three and all that, that wind blowing you back and forth and the ruts in the road where you're following ruts. Um, you just crank the steering stabilizer up a little. It's like, oh, this drives like a car now. I can stand this. So, yeah, we have the stuffs there, um, the, uh, the accessories, it's uh, 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 all out there and available. So if the guy wants to build a, an overlander, he can sure do it. We're still working on our JL stuff to get, uh, you know, all the racks and so forth going on the, for the JLs on it. But yeah, Jeeps are an awesome platform for that. And the they thing really with that, are. You know, it, it, I was a diehard Jeep guy for the longest time. And when I started doing overlanding, I kind of swapped over to Toyota platforms. At the time, they were the comfortable ride when I was driving cross country to go out west or I was taking a trip in them, you know, so I could ride in, ride in a Toyota pickup or a forerunner very comfortably. But now with Jeep and especially the way, um, like, for instance, the way your lift kits are designed, 
it's so mm-hmm. comfortable now to be in a Jeep long yeah. distances. You know, I grew up yeah. traveling in like a CJ5 and a TJ, and that was not a comfortable. Ooh. Four hours later, you were beat to death. But yeah. now with, with JKs and JLs, they're just so comfortable and, and such a good platform for overlanding. They've really come yeah. a long way. Yeah, yeah, true story. So, well, man. so, uh, all right, we got the overland guys, oh, Jeep guy or the beach guys. You know, you're building a, you're building one for the beach. That that's a different group. And I always laugh because uh, there's this, there's this thing between the the real wheeler dudes, you know, they are actually actually using their jeeps out there, and then these guys are on the beach. What is that? You know, twenty four inch wheels, and, you know, these forty twos, and they're fifteen fifty wide, and bump pumping sound systems and all that. And <laughs> I always have to laugh because I'm like, all right, buddy. You're out there on some hilltop with a broken axle trying to figure out how to get your Jeep off before that storm hits. And that guy with his thumping sound systems hanging out on the beach with a bunch of fine young ladies. And he's cooking some, some food on the back of his Jeep and just enjoying some tunes and kicking back. Now, you tell me what's the better deal, you know? <laughs> so teach his own, I always say. It's like, don't, you know? Don't bag on this guy or that guy, whatever. They're all doing their own thing. It's okay. That's the thing that's cool about a Jeep is you can build it how you want. My golly, build it how you want. You know, you don't have to you know, follow somebody's dictates as to how you how they think your Jeep should be. Just, just build it how you want and make it yours. And that's, that's what's cool about it. You can have to put your personality into it and stuff. So if you want to put an angry grill on it, go ahead. <laughs> sorry <laughs> there i am don't judge <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just kidding you know you, you can do whatever we did that uh, that bikini build i don't know if you saw that we did it for sumo last year that big uh it's that um what is that called? it's bikini that's what the color is on the new jl and then we did the orange on it, the wheels and so forth and, what a what a fun Jeep, but man, that was that was a blinger. And the good we didn't even have a safe sound system. You gotta get hold of the DS eighteen guys and get yourself some sound in there if you're gonna you're gonna run one of those beach cruisers. But hey, it's all good. Then there's the crawler guys. Um, you start the crawler guys always laugh at the beach guys because they're running these giant tires with stock axles. They're like, ah, that ain't gonna work. I'm like, yeah, it is. They're not gonna wheel it. They're driving it on the road, they'll be just fine. But uh, if you're going to take it off road and work it, and you're running, uh, you start getting up in there in the 40 tire, 40 inch tire range, 38s and 40s. Man, that's putting a lot of stress on those little, those little axles, even if they're 44 Rubicons or whatever. It gets, uh, it gets a lot of stress on those um, little 30 spline axles and so forth. So you really need to get them up there and. Um, 35 when they when you hear that 30 spline 35 spline all they're doing is they're taking the axle shaft and then they count the the number of splines around it well to put a spline on the shaft if you want more splines it's going to take a bigger shaft to fit more splines so it kind of is indicative of the shaft size when you start counting the splines on them so if you say a a 27 spline on the the front 30 axle in your jk or something that's that's a pretty small shaft and you compare that to a 35 spline and it's it's a substantial difference in the size, so it also increases the strength dramatically. So, yeah, you start doing the, the big 40-inch tires and all that, and you're going to use it off-road, and no pocketbook, because you're going to be buying axle. You start throwing a set of 60s under there, and it's life-changing. They're just amazing. You don't have to worry about it. I, I remember back in the day when we were, we, were, we used to bring welders and U joints and toolboxes and just just stuff that you know, we were always fixing something. But these new Jeeps, uh, you get them built up right, shoot, you can just go out and use them and not have to sit there and work on the dang things on the trail the whole time. So it's kind of a beautiful thing. Yeah. So just build it for what you're doing and then you're not having to fix it every time you turn around and something breaks on the trail. So, yeah, yeah, don't get carried away with tires. 
Yeah, they they most definitely have become more bulletproof, and it may, it does make for a more enjoyable time. You're not doing the the repairs on the trail for half the day and wheeling half the day too. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, well, yeah, go ahead. So, one of the things we really haven't talked about, and I saw a question kind of come up. Um, uh, Chuck Robert asked, um, "How do you feel about drilled and slotted rotors on Jeeps?" You guys actually, I think, make a brake upgrade kit, correct? Yeah, it's a, it's a slotted. We do a, a big brake kit. The, the, the deal is if you take a 12-inch rotor, that's what they give us um, on the, the U.S. Jeeps. So it's kind of funny because the, the ones in Australia and Europe and stuff, they get like a 13-inch rotor. So it's, it's, it's all these mechanical advantage. So you got a wrench, and you're going you're gonna to put it on that bolt, and you're going to turn it. You're going to turn it from here. Or you can bring your hand right here, and then you have a lot of leverage. It's just that same thing. You got a bigger rotor. You, the, the, the caliper is, is grabbing it out on the outside of that rotor, and so it, it's just a mechanical advantage. It, it's easier for that pressure to stop you. So we just uh, we got a big rotor kit. So that's all we do is we jump the rotor size up to a 13.5 on the front, 13.3 on the back, and then use your same calipers and brakes. And they work amazing for like 35 inch tires and above. And it's, they're not that expensive and it's just a great fix. Um, the slotted thing, we have a, a slotted one and then we have just a normal, normal. I've tried them both. To be honest with you, I couldn't tell any difference. Um, we're not NASCAR, you know, we're not, we're not bringing them up to a red hot glow every time we turn, make a turn. Um, although I did have one guy that came down Big Bear Pass on the, that's that's in Colorado, um, and he he called up. He had our big brake in it, which is a bigger caliper and rotor and the whole deal. He calls up and he's like, "I'm really mad. These things are, these brakes are, they're just not what I thought they'd be." And I came off that hill and they're all smoking and everything. It was terrible. They just didn't stop my jeep. I'm like, "Holy cow! Was your jeep loaded?" Well, yeah, I had you know five people in it. Were you pulling anything? Well, yeah, I had my trailer on behind it. What was in the trailer? I was loaded with all our bikes and all our gear. Whoa, that's pretty heavy. Were you in low range? What? Did you have it <laughs> in low range when you're going down the hill? Uh, no. Like, dude, you should be sending me a thank you card because we just saved your life. If you <laughs> yeah. hadn't had that big great brake kit on there, you would be dead because uh, those brakes just saved your life, buddy. And in the and by the way, he's low range like that when you're loaded come on you know <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> so anyway yeah brakes make a big difference so that's the next one the bigger caliper and then we actually have our uh, our delta brake kit which is four piston caliper the idea with going from a two piston the big one big caliper to a four piston is you can use smaller pistons and uh so you don't have the um there's there's a, a mechanical advantage in the hydraulics. So in your master cylinder, when you push on your brake pedal, there's a there's the size of the piston and it's pushing fluid and that fluid will go out. And if on the other end you have big big uh, areas that need to get filled with fluid to make a piston move, it's going to take a lot of pedal pressure to move enough fluid to squeeze those calipers. So by going to a little bit smaller ones, we're able to um, not have quite as much. Uh, fluid movement so we can keep a, a hard, you know, a good solid pedal feel on them. Uh, and going with the four piston, uh, it's, it gives you that full pinch instead of pistons from one side and then sliding the caliper the other way. It's, it's just a, a different design. They just stop better. And they do, you know, they, they really uh, they really make them stop. So anyway, there's a couple of different options on brake. But back to the question, I couldn't tell any difference on the slotted versus the other. <laughs> They're more money though, and they look cool. There's that. Yeah, I, I definitely think brakes are an overlook because I mean, the difference between a 33 inch tire and a 37 inch tire weight wise, it's quite a bit. So that's a lot of rolling mass to slow down, even going down the road, just daily driving your Jeep. You know, it definitely, when you get that big and then you add bumpers and all your gear and stuff, it, it lengthens that slowdown time. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. We were doing, uh, highly scientific tests on it, you know? I mean, they had this pylon or just a, a cone set up on the road, and then I'd come up to it, watching the speedometer to make sure I was exactly 60 miles an hour as I crossed that cone and slam on the brakes, and then just 
we'd measure how far it stopped. And it was, even with our crappy little test there, it was like, it was enough of a difference that it was, I, w- I was getting like three or four Jeep lengths. And, you know, you're, you start thinking three or four Jeep lengths that you stopped better and put that onto the freeway and you're like, okay, that's probably good. You know? Yeah. Plus, you don't push through your brakes when you're off road. You know, how many times do we come off a hill, we're in low range, and the stinking, you know, our, our computer's keeping our engine idle up there where it wants it to be. So it's always pulling us. We're in low range, so it's trying to cruise us off this hill. You're standing on your brakes, and you're fighting the engine and the brakes and everything, and the brakes are losing the battle. And you're just coming down that hill pretty quick. So, yeah, it, it's, it helps you in that situation where you can control the stopping. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I think uh, Dennis Campbell said, "What did you say the large the large rotor works with the stock calipers and pads?" Yeah, yeah, that I I like that system with uh, up to like a thirty five inch tire. Um, it it works really well. We have them front and rear. It's just a big rotor kit, so it's stock caliper. You just take your exact. In fact, we did a video on it, and they're so easy to do that I just did it on the side of the road. It's like, I'm going to show you how easy this is and jack the thing up and swap it out and put the caliper on. What an idiot. That was a real pain. But anyway, <laughs> you can do it. So that's all it is, is you're swapping out the rotor from a 12 inch to a, a, a 13 and a half inch, you know, so you're just, you're, you're doing that little wrench from there or you're doing the wrench from there. You just mechanical advantage. It. It's it's substantial difference. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Very good. What uh, what other type of knowledge maybe we haven't covered that uh, you might like to share with people who are building their vehicles now? You guys are you guys are giving away a set of uh, tires, those BFGs. Yeah. Uh, you guys take the KM threes. I'm telling you right now. I've run. I I ran one of the test sets for them, and then I ran two more sets of them. I really like that tire. You guys, the sidewalls are better in them. Um, they have amazing traction. They work good in the snow, out in the sand. If we go with the KM3, I'm just going to give you a little helpful here right there. <laughs> um, what else have we not talked about? Um, um, shoot, I don't know. Do you guys have any other questions on here? The the brake thing, we did the, uh, oh, long arms? I mean, yeah. how long are we going? What time is it? We got, are we Okay. Oh yeah, we're good. Okay, bore everybody to tears. But uh, long arm versus short arm. I don't know if that's a. I think that's, that's a, a good, good one. one. Um, the thing uh, back in the TJ days, going from a, a short arm to a long arm was huge because the short arms on the, the arms on the TJs were so stinking short that when you when you'd lift the Jeep so. Here's your arm. It's all sitting there level at right height when a normal just you know stock Jeep. And all of a sudden you lift the body up and your axle stays down there. And you lift it up three inches and all of a sudden this angle of the arm is so abrupt that every time you, you hit a bump with it, now you see how it, its shock load is going up. So instead of the instead of hitting the bump and just having it go up and down, it's like it's throwing that shock load up into your Jeep. And man. You could feel it. And the other thing is, is you're trying to control your axles and everything with these arms that are pointing at the ground. It was, a, it was an East Coast thing. I used to, back in the day, we'd come out and we'd see all these TJs that are jacked up like 10 inches in the air with, you know, tires on them and stuff. And then sure, the arms are just pointing straight down. I'm like, well, okay, it's, it's a beach guy. It looks good. And man, would it not wheel. <laughs> those arms, it does a couple of things. Those arms, as they swing in, you think about your wheelbase. Your wheelbase at, at the bottom down here, that wheelbase is swinging in as well. So you just took a little short wheelbase Jeep, and then you, you brought the lift up and sucked the arms in, and now you just dropped your wheelbase by another, I don't know, they'll move like three or four inches doing that. And three or four inches is a big deal on a, on a wheelbase as you start going off-road with it. So by jumping back to a long arm system, First thing it does is it, it brings your tires back under the Jeep, so you can you can swing them back out, adjust them back out to their original position. Um, 
And then it does that shock load thing where instead of having that arm just pointing straight to the ground and every bump just transferring it, you, you do that same thing and, and you bring that arm way out there and now you bring it up and it gives you, you know, it'll let those bumps travel back and forth without doing that sh straight up into the short one. So long arms, uh, long arms really give you some, some stability on the road. Um, and we're back to that mechanical advantage thing where a longer arm gives you, you know, better control on it that way as well. So better ride, better stability, uh, better flex, lets them droop. When you're trying to flex a little teeny arm, I mean, there isn't much that can happen. When you're clear out here, you can you can drop a long ways and your, your joints at the, at the Jeep barely move. So going to a long arm makes a huge difference, TJs especially. JKs, uh, we start getting up to, when the, when the JK first came out, we didn't have our long arm out. And we had a lot of TJ guys that obviously moved to the JK. And they all knew what a, a, a long arm kit did on their TJ. So they're, they're like, I want a long arm. We're like, well, we don't have it yet. Let's just put this, this uh, short arm kit on it for a while. And then when our long arm comes out, we'll swap you out. We'll make a deal on it. Like, okay. So they did that. And so they were driving these things. They drove them like you know, six months sometimes, you know, before they got them swapped out. And they would drive them all that time, uh, three inch lift, short arms, all that. Not that big a lift. You think it'd be just fine, especially because the JK arms, make our JK control arms are longer to start with. Um, but every single one of those guys, when we swapped them out to a long arm, they came back in and they're like, "Oh my gosh, that's like a new Jeep. The highway manners on it are so much more stable. The ride on it and so forth." So um, that was kind of an eye opener to me. I'm like, "Wow, okay, I guess." Long arm still holds true, you know, all the way up the, all the, way up the line. I currently have the, the long arm kit on my uh, um, little two door, and uh, man, I like it. it, it for, a, for a two door, it's nice and stable as that thing goes down the road and all that, you know, it's uh, it's pretty impressive what a long arm kit will do. So, long arm or short arm, if you're in the, the lower lift heights, you know, if you're down two and a half, uh, even even on the JKs, you get three inch. At, at some point, it can be counterproductive because you have a control arm hanging down there below your Jeep. So if you're just running a small tire and a small lift, that control arm can get in the way of when you're you know, dragging over rocks and that kind of thing. There's two schools of thought there too, because you can say, would I rather drag my control arm, or I have the control arm out of the way and drag my drive line? So yeah, all right, yeah, it does give you a little bit of a little bit of uh, protection there. So anyway, um, long arms, uh, it's 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 a huge huge difference in cost and everything else to go long versus short. But basically, the smaller lifts, you're going to be fine not going with the long arm. Uh, the newer ones, um, I've driven them both ways uh, until you start getting up, you know, maybe three and a half four inches on them. Then, then the long arm kicks in, and it, it does really help. But uh, from for most of them, you can be just fine with the short arm kit. I don't know anymore. Awesome. Um, we got a question from uh, Don Hazelwood here, asking about uh, a little bit about hydro assist steering. Hmm. Yeah. There's a couple of companies make some. We don't make a hydro. We use. We always use PSC. Uh, they actually made a. A steering gear for them too that uh, it's a, a big bore box just a steering gear that acts like a hydro assist without all the ram and everything you can just change the gearbox now it's a pretty impressive change it really helps the steering on but going to a hydro assist is uh well it's life changing because <laughs> you get out there and you're 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 you know, you let the air out of your tires. You got to set it, I don't know, whatever, 38s or something on it. And you, you let the air pressure out of them. And now you're trying to steer that thing on, on the rock surface. Or, um, yeah, it's it's tough to turn them. It just is. You, a lot of times you just don't turn them. You have to be moving in your jacket back and forth to try to get them to go. You put the ram on there. And that ram assist, it does a couple of things. It takes some load off your steering gear. So that your your sector shaft and your steering gear and all that it takes a lot of pressure off of that and puts it right down on the tie rod between the two wheels so you can that ram is sitting down there um to make all the ram mounts to move the ram up on top of your uh of your tie rod 
so that, that ram can just do its job down there. So they time it. It's a it's a tricky thing because you you can't if you get your your steering gear also has hydraulic assist on there. So if if you turn fast, if you haven't got your ram and your steering gear um, fluid flows timed right, it'll go oh, and it'll just stop, and then you have to wait for the ram to come. So you want to whip into a parking spot, and you're like, oh, <laughs> there goes the parking. It doesn't happen fast. Or if you're trying to rally down the road, you know, in your pre, you're like, I'm trying to make a turn, it'll just stop that wheel. So um, make sure whoever you get it from, I know the PSC guys have done a, a lot of uh, really good work um, dialing dialing them in so that you, you do have that ratio down right so you don't have a lag in your steering because it can, it can get weird if they get just a little bit off. <laughs> it's, it's pretty weird. And then, and uh, I've had some that uh, when that ratio gets off, you'll be driving down the road and you'll just slightly turn and the ram will move faster in the box. So now all of a sudden you're hurting the thing down the road. So it's a, it's a trick to get them, get a, get a good system and get it dialed in. Once you do, life is good. Till then, you'll wonder. Yeah. <laughs> Next question I've got here. Um, Wyatt Martinez says uh, the benefits of the TerraFlex speed bump stop kit on the JL two and a half inch lift on 37. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, uh, shoot, the thing with speed bumps, it doesn't matter how you're using them. If you're, if you're a go fast guy, they work amazing. If you're a boulder guy, God, they just, people don't think about the boulders, but when you drop off a boulder and that suspension bottoms each time, that speed bump catching it makes a huge difference. So I am a big fan of uh, of having a speed bump. They're not they're not uh, what are they like? Just a little over five hundred bucks for a set of them or something to put on. And it's uh, man, if you're using it and maybe maybe you even have to if you're a uh, speed bumps through the neighborhood. I mean. You want to have some beagles and suck that up. <laughs> you can just blow through those things. <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> but, uh, curb and gutters. Oh man, you can just blow right over them. <laughs> no, they're pretty impressive. It's uh it's a worthwhile ad. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Oh, Dennis, this is uh my wife. She helps me run Morrison's outdoor adventures. Oh, so, cool. Um Got a question from Dennis Campbell right here. Would the long arm be supplied in a TerraFlex four inch lift kit? Yeah, you can buy long arm version of it or the short arm version of it. So yes, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, awesome. And that's, I don't know if it's JK or whatever, but yeah, either way we do them on for all of them. So we'll have a, a CT or, or an RT that the new RT, the thing with the bushing thing, I get sidetracked here. That's kind of on this topic. The bushings in your control arms can be a real pain. Um, for years, even on the JKs, it was the it was the bane of the industry. They actually took a couple of companies down. The bushing failures in their arms were so common, and people were changing them right and left. And pretty soon, the company just quit warrantying the the bushings and so forth. They got any real problems. So. Um, there's a couple ways you do it. You do a, a ball and a socket with a bushing around it so that joint can turn inside of the joint. Those are flex joints, a lot of different Johnny joints, different names they have for them. But that's, mm -hmm. that's a good flex joint. Um, what we decided and what we played with is uh, going back to a, a good rubber bushing that's real similar to the factory one. We played with the durometer of the rubber, meaning the, the, the firmness of the rubber. We got it dialed in so we could actually get that rubber to move. Um, but that still gives you a, a, a solid um, sleeve inside the rubber so that when the, when the rubber is trying to turn, uh, that sleeve, I think you see on my head, it's backwards and stuff. <laughs> that sleeve is, is, is not turning. It's twisting the rubber, and at the same time, it's, it's bending it. So you start loading up a bushing that way. When the arms drop out, you twist it, and now you're also flexing it when the axle twists. And it can put a lot of pressure on those, on those bushings, too. So we came out with the, the uh, independent rotation, the IR bushing, which is basically a sleeve that, that turns inside the bushing. So now you just got rid of that whole, that whole load factor when your arms go up and down. 
there's there's no pressure on the bushing. It can just freely rotate. So now all we're facing is the rotational pressure that direction. Um, those IR bushings, uh, lifetime guarantee on them. We, we worked with those things. We played with materials and everything for like three years to get them dialed in where we finally got a bushing that lasts that we wanted to, that we can put out. Dead quiet, no maintenance, and they just they just they just work. And then the the, uh, the alpine arms have got the, the same kind. They just don't have the rotational bushing in them, and they're going to work fine for you know eighty percent of the people out there that aren't rock crawling and flexing them really hard and all that. They work great. You just put them on; they're dead quiet. You can take them on the road, and you don't have to maintenance on the things. It's just zilch, and they just last. So we've we pretty much switched out everything on all our arms to that kind of bushing. So when a guy does a, a long arm kit, he'll come that CP kit will come with the the option of the alpine arms or a, a, that rotational. That's awesome. Yeah, that you know I remember back in the day you could always tell you know how well your bushings were doing. You get to going down a trail and you start to get that squeak and creep going on and yeah, spray a little WD forty under there, climb it up a little bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> Terrible, yeah, yeah, so. You knew then it was about time to, to start looking at replacing them or rebuilding the bushing, something along those lines. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Mike, I think you've covered all the questions. Yep. That have been asked. Uh, Dennis, it was awesome. We learned quite a bit. Uh, and thank you so much for the weekly prize oh, giveaway. No, no, it's, it's it's a lot of fun to do this, and uh, appreciate the guys that that came on and actually endured this. So, thanks, guys. Okay, <laughs> we'll we'll make it worth your while and uh, kick you out a couple of hats and first aid kit and what else did we say? I can't remember what else. Well, that, oh, the yeah. way I'll, I'll remind you. Okay. Yeah, okay. But, <laughs> the way it's going to work, Dennis, is everybody that commented will be eligible to win. We'll do a nice. random number kind of selection. And then I'll send. I'll get their address and send that to you. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So, perfect. Mike, before we leave, yeah. yes, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna hide you for a minute. Okay. And, and I'm gonna hide me for a minute, so you can tell us a little bit about what Morrison Off Road Adventures is doing right now. And when, it, when I hide my pretty face, we'll be able to see Sarah. All right. So, yeah, guys, um, thanks for joining us tonight. Tons of great information from Dennis. Um, Morrison's Outdoor Adventures, what have we got going on? So uh, some pretty cool things coming up. We are still very hard pushing on our Off-Road Essentials class every other Wednesday night at Asheville Vehicle Outfitters. Grateful for them sponsoring that uh, those classes for us. Our next one is when? This coming Wednesday. Yeah, this coming Wednesday. And we are going to be learning um, the basics for High Lift Jack. It is a hands-on class. So if you're in the Asheville area and you have two hours to spare from 7 to 9 o'clock, come on by. Cost is $25 per person and get your hands on a High Lift Jack and learn that it is the Swiss Army knife of off-road recovery tools. It's not as dangerous as people think it is. Um, other than that, we've got our very first Level 1 class, August uh, 29th. At Patriot Mountain Off-Road Park here in North Carolina, we are selling spots. I think we're cutting it off at 10. So if you're interested in signing up, go ahead and sign up because the spots are selling fast. Then um, we've got uh, ah, Dixie Run, right? So for those of you that are coming to Dixie Run, you if you're there on Friday, we are doing a um, entry-level to off-roading driving class. So come on, join us on the trail. Uh, we will do about an hour in the morning classroom portion, and then we will hit the trail and practice everything you've learned. And if you are a lady and would like to do a ladies only class with a guest lady instructor, Sarah, we'll be doing a ladies only on Saturday. So husbands, if the wife asks to use your Jeep on Sunday, you got to let her do it. Saturday, sorry. On okay. Saturday, you got to let her do it. So you can sit in the passenger seat, but zip it and let them do the work, right? So give them a chance to get behind the wheel and learn some good skills. Trust me, the only thing that could possibly come out of that that could 
be a downside is your budget gets cut in half because she's going to want a Jeep to start driving after that. So, <laughs> but she'll enjoy it. I promise uh, it'll be a great experience. So and I'll also, have some breaking news. Uh oh, what we got? Uh, come from Four Wheel Center. Yeah. Is going to sponsor one of those. That's how there'll be some neat little giveaways for the Island Trail. Awesome. And Sun, and Sun X Tools is going to sponsor the other. Very. Just like there'll be some neat giveaways for the Island Trail. Yeah, super grateful um, to Clemson Pool Drive Center and Sun X Tools for sponsoring that. That's awesome. That's great news. Um, other than that, guys, uh, follow um, us on Morrison's Outdoor Adventures on our Facebook page and our Instagram to learn more about our classes. Um, and we do have some YouTube videos uh, talking about different things and doing some different training stuff online. So check that out and you can watch about our awesome journey as we travel and live in an RV and do four wheel drive training all over the place. <laughs> no, well, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the comments. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, on Facebook and Instagram. Facebook, I, I only, you can only do 5,000 friends or something, so that's kind of full. But Instagram, like, play the Instagram game more. I, they'll let you have more on there, I guess. I don't know how that works. But anyway. Okay. Definitely appreciate being on here and watching this. Thank you a ton, well, Dennis. Say good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, guys.